Good morning and welcome to the House of Hope Atlanta, where life with God is better in every way, every day. our Lupus Awareness Sunday. My name is Minister Pam Hicks, and I am, by the grace of God, a 12-year lupus survivor. Amen. I can give you five quick reasons why I am a survivor. One, because God is good. Two, because God is good. Three, because God is good. Four, because God is good. Five, because God is good, and his grace and mercy endures forever. Let us go before the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you today, O oh God. How we honor you today, O oh God. How we exalt your holy and wondrous name, O oh God. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Touch those right now that are watching, oh God. Minister to them, Lord God, only you can, oh God. God, heal them where they need healing. Deliver where they need deliverance. Touch right now on the finances side. Whatever it is that they're standing in need of, oh Father. Touch right now, God. We thank you in advance. We're not going to wait until the battle is over, but we're going to shout before the battle is over because we know that you are worthy to be praised. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Our scripture for today is coming from Psalm 86, 9 through 12, New Revised Standard Version. And it reads, all the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, Lord and shall glorify your name. For you are great and wondrous things. You alone, O oh God, teach me your ways, O oh Lord, that, thou may, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, Lord. Lord, I glorify your name with all of my heart and I will glorify your name forever and ever. House of Hope Atlanta, let's glorify God. God, be glorified in this place. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. We want to give glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We want to glorify him in the heavens, in the earth, in this temple. God, get your glory today out of us. Hallelujah. Bye. 
glorified. Don't you want him to be glorified in your life? I know I do. This week, that's my prayer for you, that God would be glorified. We won't be distracted. Come what may, God will be glorified. Amen? Amen. I want to take this time right now to welcome you. Welcome you to this service at House of Hope of Atlanta. We want to welcome everyone today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, why don't you drop a line in that comment section and let us know where you are, where you're worshiping from. And if you who already worship with us all the time, love on our new visitors today. Give them a virtual hug from me. We love all of you and we're thankful that you're here today and you have come to worship with us. My prayer today is that you leave better than how you came at the end of this worship. So have a good day and we thank God for you in Jesus' name. Now we're going to hear from our pastor, Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Jr. Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice and be glad in it, and certainly we're here to glorify our God. I'm telling you, we're here to glorify and magnify. That means to make him great. Uh, when I was a boy, we'd have what they call magnifying glasses. You put it on an object, and it blows it up, and that's what we're supposed to do with the Lord. We're supposed to magnify him, to make him big, and the higher we lift him, the higher he'll lift up. And we greet you today, and we thank God for you, 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 and you. I want you to know that our being here today has absolutely nothing to do with how good we are, but has everything to do with how good God is. And God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. We're trying to glorify God through our ministries, through our worship, through our media. We're trying to worship God with you on and glorify God with you on today. And so we got some great things happening in our hope happenings and our events that all bring glory to God. So for a moment, uh, I want you to indulge us. We're going to go to our hope happenings and find out the things that are happening around this ministry that also bring glory to God. So let's go to Christian Core right quick. I'll be back in a second. Hey everyone, Corey and I have on our purple today up for lupus awareness and we're going to bring you all the information you need about the House of Hope. Crystal, you, you look all right in your purple. You, Thank you. You look all right. I appreciate all right. you. Crystal, now we want to recognize October as more than pink month to bring awareness to cancer, lupus, pregnancy and infant loss and domestic violence. So wear your pink and your purple all month long. And to show support for the survivors and thrivers throughout the month, help us log a million steps. Join our group, HOHA Moves, on worldwalking.org. And every time you walk, hashtag HOHA. That's a lot. I'm just saying a million? That's a lot. <laughs> I, okay. All right. If you say so. Halloween is at the end of this month, but we want you to be ready for our fun alternative called Harvest Fest. Come out on October 27th to this family-friendly event that will be filled with fun, games, and giveaways. And I need all the kids and the youth to join the Sunday and Wednesday Zoom calls. Now, there's a session for K through 5th and one for 6th through 12th. For more information, go to Hope Youth Now on all social media platforms. If you're between the ages of 21 and 39, please join young adult small groups every Thursday evening. For more information, join the Union ATL. And if you need prayer, just text the word prayer. If you would like to be saved, text the word salvation. And if you want to become a member of the House of Hope, text the word connect to the number on the screen. We have to get you all back to service, but remember that life with God is better in every way, every day. Be now, blessed. Crystal, your purple, it kind of... Here we go. No, I'm just saying like, it's a it, it's, it could be object like the purple. It Let's ain't the go. purple. Can we go back to like this is purple, but that's kind of that ain't purple Bye. for real. Do you not? You got you colorblind? All right, thank you so much, our media ministry, for blessing us and keeping us abreast of all the great things that are happening here at our ministry. Please, please plug in. Please get committed. Please uh, just latch on to, op to the opportunities that are happening here. We want us to grow from glory to glory and faith to faith. And I want you to know that life with God is better in every way and in every day. And so I think uh, we are so excited that even through this pandemic, we're still doing multi-generational ministry. Uh, and very excited about our new season of Hope TV. A lot of powerful new programming, uh, whether it's for your children with uh, Hey Miss Kim, 
to our youth uh, with their program, No Cap, every day. You can work out with, get up and exercise. We got a new series of Sound Mind hosted by Dr. Margie Gill. This whole mental health piece is so important. And I don't want you to be afraid of that, amen? We, we've got to bridge that gap between the faith community and the mental health community. So when we talk about having good mental health, that is something that you should not shun. It's very, very, very important. So that new series of Sound Mind is going to be very, very powerful. Uh, so we can stay emotionally and mentally healthy. I want to talk about that. We always talk about our spirits, but our mental health is very important. Some of us are thinking about things or hanging around people who are not good for our mental health. Listen, hang around people who, who bring peace out of you, pe people who don't make you be defensive. Hang around people who can lift you to a higher trajectory. And so that show is on now. We've got stuff uh, for our youth, for business, uh, uh, worship, just a host, a cadre of programs that are now being presented in this fifth season of Hope TV going very strong. Last year, we had over 100 million views of our content via the cumulative platforms, whether it's Apple TV, Roku, Twitch, Amazon, Fire TV, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Periscope, Twitter, the websites. However you are viewing, please log in every day to get a daily dose of hope. And so I'm so very excited, so very thankful for each of you for what you're doing. Listen, if you have a life transition or a crisis, I can't emphasize this enough. We're here to serve you. We're here to serve you. And if that's you, uh, very, very simply, if you need uh, someone to know about your hospitalization or death or something tragic that has happened, listen, just get your phone and text the word CARE, C-A-R-E to the number 678-201-1351, and one of our congregational care team members will be right there to assist you to make sure that your needs are met. I wanna thank everybody uh, for what you've been doing through this pandemic to stay abreast and to keep the ministry afloat. And we look forward to the day soon we're able to gather back in worship in the cathedral in a safe environment with plenty of room for social distancing so we can worship our great God together. And to that end, we're still making progress on our God First Mission 2020. Uh, it's been a massive task, to say the least. Uh, six to acres on this campus, seven buildings, and we've had to do stuff to all seven buildings. We're working on them. Our last two projects, our largest ones, family, we, we're about 75, 80% finished with this whole project. The only issue is the two remain outstanding uh, phases are the largest and most extensive phases out of our whole campaign, which is the repaving of our entire parking lot. That's over 800,000 square feet that has to come up. It was never put down right in, right in the first place. We gotta take it all up and put it down right and stripe it. It's gonna be a massive project. We're gonna need your help and also to finalize the, the work on the, uh, the, the cathedral. So those, two, those, those are two massive programs and phases that we're gonna need your help. As you can see on the screens now, we've made significant progress over the past 18 months. New roofs on the Edgewood Smith Center, new roof on the atrium, 13 new flat roofs on the cathedral. My goodness, a 225-ton chiller unit uh, on the uh, Smith Center, a 300-ton chiller unit on the cathedral, brand new. And we're installing two more brand new 60-ton units of air on the roof of the cathedral. So major progress is being made uh, in this room, the, the, the atrium. Uh, you know, those who've been here, you know it looks different. All this has transpired during the cathedral. The theater, uh, we had worship there a few weeks ago. The bathrooms, uh, the, the Smith Center bathrooms are being finished now. And they will be up, up and functional in the next coming days. All of this is possible because of your support. And so we need you to continue to support the ministry. We've been around here 145 years, but we're not a museum. We're still trying to serve the present age. And so to that end, we're gonna worship God through our giving now. I want you to bring your best gifts unto the Lord. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord, uh, your word tells us that you give seed to the sower. And we thank you for that promise. Lord, we thank you for this moment of stewardship. We know the earth is yours and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell that are in it. Everything we have, You've entrusted to us to return back a portion to you. And so, Lord, during this time of giving, out of love, faith, and obedience, we've come to sow seed into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for the dedication of your people who have supported this church financially. And so on today, I ask 
special blessings for those who are going to sow a seed on today into this ministry. Lord, would you multiply these gifts and would you let them be see the result of their obedience and their faith to you. Some, God, have a desire to give, but due to the economy, don't have an employment, don't have any means. We ask, Lord, that you would remove any feelings of guilt and provide them with an employment opportunity, one that will blow their mind so they can take care of their physical, personal needs and then make a contribution for kingdom building. Lord, receive these gifts. Gifts. Sanctify them. Let no one lack or have a need after giving these gifts. Multiply them and use them in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, as we're preparing to give, let me give a shout out to our stewardship and budget committee of our church. Uh, they meet every month to review our expenses. They go through every category to make sure we're in line based upon the church budget. And I want to thank them for that, uh, for make, making sure that we have the accountability and that we operate with fiscal integrity. And that's the reason why we may make, be able to make a lot happen because of good sound people in leadership. Uh, who They're already working on the budget for next year. And I want to thank them and Sister Sabrina Wilburn for her leadership in that regard and the entire stewardship and budget committee that works with our board of directors here to make sure that we are on track and moving in the right direction. I, all I'm saying is we have some great people here who have helped push us forward in managing what we have. And I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize them because it's through their leadership that we've been able to have margin to do some of the things we've been doing. So shout out to our Stewardship and Budget Committee as well. All right, there are four ways we can give today. The first way you can give is through text to give, text to give. There are three codes there, H-O-H-H-T, H-O-H-A-T, House of Hope Atlanta Tithe, H-O-H-A-O, -O, House of Hope Atlanta Offering, H-O-H-A-G-F, that G-F is God first, that's Mission 2020, that's our building fund. That's going to help us to get the other $3 million, $2, $3 million we need to finish the rest of this project. And so I want you to give, 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 give to that today. Every member of our church, I want you to give something, 5, 10, 20, above your tithes and your offerings to H-O-H-A-G-F. Help us to finish strong so we come back for worship. We have the room and the safety that we need to worship God in spirit and truth. So you can text to give. You also can give through cash app, dollar sign H-O-H-A-T-L. It's on the screen now. If you so desire, you can give through the website. Uh, if you're watching online, click that giving links, follow the prompts. And then lastly, if you want to give through the P.O. Box, our P.O. Box is on the screen. P.O. Box uh, 361 499 Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Again, that's P.O. Box 361 499 Decatur, Georgia, 30036. I want to thank you in advance for your support. And I look forward to us continuing to grow together in the grace of our God. Our worship team is going to come back and bless us, after which I'll come back with the word and we'll go higher in worship. Come on, let's keep worshiping the God together this morning. God bless you. We claim victory. We speak victory in this house. Come on, somebody just begin to declare victory. Victory over your life. Victory over your family. Yeah. 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 The giant is dead. We've got his head. He will never rise to conquer again. We know the bigger they are, the harder they fall. We have killed the giant we have slain. Goliath, hallelujah. Yeah. 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 The giant is dead. Hey, we've got his head, and he will never rise to conquer again. Oh no, no, we know the bigger. They are the heart. 
must come down no weapon formed against me shall prosper if you are for me and if all things are possible the every giant must come down say no weapon formed against me
shall be mine. Hallelujah. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, I know that victory. My, 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 my. I said victory shall be mine. Come on. Type that in the comments. Victory. Ah, oh, yeah. Victory shall be mine. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And we give God, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you. Thank you for the victory. Thank you that that giant still fall down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for by faith the declaration that whatever giant we're facing, no matter how large and insurmountable they may seem to be, by faith we speak that the giant has already been taken down. We thank you by faith. And that allow, allow the aura of victory and the spirit of victory to permeate. Uh, airspace and cyberspace now so no defeat oh God I speak today no defeat defeat is not an option we shall be victorious and we give you praise and we count it done in joy in Jesus name amen amen come on clap your hands and give God praise hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah my God, we serve a great God who's rich and he's great and mighty. He's rich in mercy. I don't know about y'all, but it is because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. <laughs> His compassions fail not. They're new every morning and great is our God's faithfulness. If you know we serve a faithful God, won't you type that in the comments? We serve a God who is faithful, 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 faithful is our God. God is a keeping God. God is a keeper He's our shade upon our right hand, so the sun won't smite us by day, nor the moon by night. Uh, we're here in this Cancer Awareness Month, and we're here today on this Lupus Awareness Sunday, and our, our minds and our hearts and our prayers and our energy and our good vibes and positivity goes out to everybody who's been affected uh, by lupus. And uh, my prayers are with you today. They're with you today, and uh, uh, this is something that we, we, I didn't hear about lupus when I was a kid. And it's a more of a uh, recent development as far as I'm concerned. Maybe the last 20, 30 years, we didn't hear a lot about this as kids. But I want you to know that God is a sustaining God, a sustaining God. Uh, I want to shout out my aunt who's been battling lupus for, for years now. And uh, thank God for her strength that God is allowing her to fight through lupus. And, uh, and everybody else who's dealing with that, my prayers and our, and our heart go out to you today. Uh, and when keeping with that, there's a word in St. Luke chapter uh, 13 that I want to share with you and I'm, I want you to turn your Bibles uh, with me to Luke chapter 13. There's a word uh, that I want to lift. It's in the 10th verse of Luke 13 for this Lupus Awareness Sunday. I want to deal with this in Luke 13 and 10. Uh, the King James says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And listen to this. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 11 is our key verse. It says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift up herself. Uh, I want to talk for, for a few thoughts, from, for, for a few moments from this thought today. How to handle your weak days. How to handle your weak days. And that's not W-E-E-K. That's W-E-A-K. How to handle your weak days. Uh, my aunt has suffered with lupus for a past decade and longer. And when I see her periodically, you can tell when she's having her stronger days. And I can tell by how her mobility when she's dealing with a weak day. Uh, most of us, when we talk about the weekdays, we, 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 we normally think about Sunday through Saturday, seven days a week. But I'm not talking about getting it through the week or making it through the weekend. I'm talking about what happens in life when you've been dealing with week days, W-E-A-K, days when you are devoid of strength, weekdays. Days when your body is filled with pain. Weak days. 
days when it seems as if you don't have enough money to keep up with the escalating cost of medicine. Weak days. The days that even when it rains, you feel the impact of the rain in your body. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Weak days. There are people right now who are watching this service that it hurts them literally just to get up out of the bed. I had a conversation with my good friend and brother Deion Sanders a few weeks ago, and he was telling me about his foot that was just uh, in such excruciating pain that after being a, an athlete his entire life that couldn't even get out of the bed because of the throbbing pain in his foot and how he was trying to deal with coaching on a, a foot that was so weak that inevitably led him to surgery because he couldn't deal with the pain. And my prayers with my brother as he's recuperating now because he was going through some weak days. But what happens when you've been going through some weak days and seemingly surgery won't help? Sermons won't help. Medicines won't help. Such was the case in the time of this text. There is a woman here who has been dealing with weak days. I love Luke because Luke, as a medical doctor, as he writes to someone whose name was Theophilus, is very graphic and descriptive in his writing. I love the Gospel of Luke uh, because of his specificity and his inclusion on women and children and the outcast and the oppressed. I love Luke's gospel because it's not for the Jewish or Greco-Roman aristocracy. Luke's gospel is not just for the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees. Uh, it's not just for the Sadducees or those who are on the upper echelons of life. I like Luke's gospel because if you've ever been downtrodden, depressed, and outcast, even in a patriarchal and male-dominated society, Luke includes women more than any other gospel narrative. And I like because Luke, as he talks about his medical prognosis today, talks about a woman who, if you look at his description of her, you can automatically almost assume that what she was going through is eerily uh, similar to what many lupus patients are dealing with in 2021. He says that there's a woman who has a spirit of infirmity. That word infirmity there in the Greek is the word asthenia. It means constant weakness. That word uh, asthenia there, it means chronic pain. That word asthenia there means the, the inability to have mobility. This woman has chronic asthenia. And what he says about her is she's been dealing with a spirit of infirmity. It's one thing to have a weakness and a temporary moment where you lack strength. But what happens when it seems that you have been accompanied by a spirit of weakness? It's one thing to have a sudden or a momentary lapse in judgment. But what happens when you're categorized not even by your name but by your spirit? Uh, we don't know this woman's name, but we know her prognosis. She had a, a spirit of weakness. Everywhere she went, we didn't see a spirit of joy, a spirit of happiness. She's categorized by a spirit of weakness, and she's been dealing with this 18 years. 18 years, and Luke tells us, and her anatomy has her bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Some scholars say she's suffering from something called acute scoliosis which was an extreme curvature of her spine. Um, some commentators say that her case was so severe, it is as if her knees uh, were affixed to her chest. Uh, she is bent over and, and could no, no wise lift up herself, which implies some type of paralysis. People who suffer from lupus have such a debilitating uh, uh, impact on their bodies that they can't move, and some of some some of their uh, some of their extremities uh, have lacked strength and don't have the usage of their legs, and sometimes their hands, and sometimes the back hurts. This woman can't even lift up herself, and she's been in this situation. For 18 years, I'm talking about weekdays, <laughs> 18 years of weekdays, 216 months of weekdays, 936 weeks of weekdays, 6,570 days of weekdays, 157,680 hours of weekdays. Her whole life has been categorized by weekdays. 
If you allow me to just uh, uh, use this contextually, uh, she is, a, she is a, a, a paradigm in many instances for what some people who are dealing with lupus may feel. And, and there are others of you who don't have any challenge with your body. Uh, God, God has blessed you and you, you, you're physically fit, you're physically mobile, and you, you look wonderful. But, but guess what? Some of us have lupus of the soul. Some of us have lupus of the mind. Some of us have debilitating, painful areas in other places of our lives. And yet you have, what happens when you are physically fit, but emotionally and mentally weak? I'm telling you, each of us sometimes have to deal with spirits that come to try to disfigure and deform us. And this woman has been dealing with a spirit of astenia. 18 years, 216 months, 936 weeks, 6,570 days, 157,680 hours of perpetual non-stop weakness. But Luke comes on the scene to tell us that this woman has been dealing with some weak days, but she gives us a perfect paradigm for how to handle your weak days. First thing Luke tells us that if you're going to have some weak days, the first thing you and I ought to do when we're dealing with our weak days, our W-E-A-K D, W-E-A-K days and capitalize that your weak days. What do you do when you're going through weak days? Luke tells us, number one, that you ought to go to the right place. Can the saints say, go to the right place, go to the right place. It blessed me because verse number 10 says, uh, and he was teaching <laughs> in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Jesus is in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Jesus is in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Jesus was in a synagogue on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was given as a sign of rest uh, for the ancient Jews. And the Sabbath was on Saturdays. They would attend on Saturdays for worship. It was a day of worship and rest. The Sabbath was on Saturday. And to this day, some uh, sects worship on Saturday. But many people ask the question, well, why do y'all worship on Sunday if Sabbath was the original day and it was on Saturday? Well, it is because we believe, Paul said, that there be no resurrection. Our faith is in vain. And the resurrection took place on the first day of the week. And so the crux of the Christian faith is on Saturday. Jesus was Lord of the Sabbath. And for us, uh, Sunday was the day he was resurrected. And without the resurrection, uh, there's no need for worship anyway. And the early church began to worship on Sunday shortly after the resurrection. So while some do worship on Saturday, we worship on Sunday. Why? Because we do that the day he got up which is the epitome and the foundation of our faith. And some people still argue about whether Saturday is the right day to worship or Sunday is the right day to worship. Let me just stop by and just say this to you. If you're still fussing about whether Saturday or Sunday is the appropriate day of worship, you really missed the whole boat. Because in actuality, I'm not just a, I, what I am. I want to call myself a seven day Adventist. Yeah, you heard me right. What I mean by that is I don't wait till Saturday or Sunday to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. If you can only praise him one day a week, uh, you got a pitiful faith. Uh, Sometimes you can be riding alone on Monday by yourself, but when you think about how good God has been to you, you can throw a hallelujah. Anybody ever had a testimony on your taco Tuesday and you're praising by you? Anybody ever had worship on Wednesday? You were thankful on Thursday, had faith on Friday and you shouted on Saturday and you served on Sunday. Don't relegate your faith to one day of a week because uh, this is a day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice. Oh God, Jesus was teaching on Saturday. But what blessed me here is verse number 11 says, and behold, <laughs> there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. The first, the first person who's mentioned in the church on that day was a woman who had some weak days. Y'all missed your whole shot. What I love about it is that she didn't wait until she got well to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, Sometimes people go through agony and stress and it makes them disconnect from God. But I love this text because she's there on uh, in worship. Uh, yeah, everything wasn't together, but she was in worship. Uh, she was filled with pain, but she was in worship. Uh, her body 
body was hurting, but she was in worship. 18 years, but she was in worship. Uh, 216 months of pain, but she was in worship. 936 weeks of agony, but she was in worship. 6,570 days of, of excruciating illness, but she was in worship. 157,680 hours uh, of pain, but she was in worship. Uh, don't let worship run you from the church, uh, but let worship run you back to God. Uh, I'm going to the right place. Uh, my God, we're coming out of this pandemic in a while. Uh, and when we get back, I want to make sure you find yourself in the right place. Um, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, and if you can't worship uh, in the public space right now because pastors are prioritizing public safety right in your home. While you got your iPad, your laptop, and your TV, throw up a hallelujah because you can be in the place of worship wherever you are she's weak but she goes to the right place uh, she's not having netflix and chill uh, oh god she's having youtube yearning uh, she's having facebook faith uh, facebook church uh, she's having an apple tv anointing and somebody shout i'm gonna praise him and be in the right place but not only if you're having weekdays but you go to the right place number two if you're having some weekdays you must see the right person uh, lord have mercy the bible says uh, and we behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years uh, yes Lord and she could no longer lift up herself uh, she went to church uh, and guess what y'all uh, she saw Jesus uh, I don't know about y'all but I want to put our eyes back on Jesus uh, I believe that's what's happening in this world right now uh, last year we got caught up uh, the world was divided some were trying to see Trump uh, some were trying to see Biden uh, some were caught up in whether to be libertarian or the green party or democrat or Republican uh, and I understand our political inclinations but understand this uh, yeah politics is two sides of the same coin in many instances uh, but you got to make sure you got your faith uh, in Jesus uh, hallelujah maybe that's what this world is teaching us um, build your hopes on things that are eternal somebody say I'm going to see Jesus uh, and when we get back to worship uh, it ain't about your dress uh, or who's singing uh, all the repairs on the church uh, oh I want to see Jesus uh, open the eyes of my heart Lord I want to see you high and lifted up allow the train of your glory I want to see Jesus uh, so she went to the right place uh, she saw the right person uh, and not only did she see the right person but verse 12 says uh, and he saw her. Uh, can I tell you something? He sees you. Uh, in your ups, uh, he sees you. In your downs, uh, he sees you. Uh, in your rights, uh, he sees you. In your wrongs, he sees you. Uh, and when Jesus saw her, uh, I love it because he saw her, y'all. Uh, but then after he saw her, yes, he called her. Uh, he spoke to her. Uh, can somebody shout right there? He's still speaking. Uh, I'm so glad that he sees me. Uh, he has something that moves on the optic nerves uh, of his omniscient eyes uh, and enables him to look beyond my faults uh, and see all of my needs. Uh, but not only did he see her, the Bible says he spoke to her. He called her to him. Uh, oh, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Uh, oh, the day you hear his voice, hard, not your heart. Somebody say, he's still calling me. Uh, he's calling me uh, from labor to immortality somebody say I'm glad he'll speak to me every now and then I tell him speak to my heart I won't go alone I'll never go on my own if you speak to my heart I don't know what you're dealing with right now but I came to tell you he's still speaking he'll speak to your storms he'll speak to your situations he'll speak to your challenges give him praise right now that he's still speaking I got to move on here but my daddy used to sing a song I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice that I hear falling on my ear the son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tell me that I am his own and the joy we share we tarry thou somebody say won't it speak to you 
and, and, and so he, 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 he saw her. He spoke to her. Uh, but, 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 and he said to her, woman, Ooh. come on, Bishop, thou art loose Ooh. from thine infirmity. He saw her and he spoke to her. Uh, she went to the right place. She saw the right person. Y'all, but, but can I tell y'all something that blessed me? It was not the fact that he saw her that made a difference. Uh, it was not the fact here that he spoke to her that made a difference. She went to the right place. She saw the right person. But number three, here it is. She, she got the right touch. Y'all, 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 you missed your shout. He saw in verse 12. He spoke to her in verse 12. But verse 13, don't y'all make me run. I ran this morning. He said, and he laid. And he laid his hands on her. Somebody lift up your hands and lay your hands on me, Jesus. Uh, lay your hands on me, Jesus. I Listen, I was shackled by a heavy burden neath a load of guilt and shame. Uh, but then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I'm no longer the same. Uh, he touched me. He touched me. And all the joy flooded my soul. Uh, something happened. I said something happened. Something happened. And now I know he, he touched me. Somebody say, touch me, touch me, touch my family, touch my mind, touch my spirit, touch my emotion, touch my finances, touch my job, touch my favor, touch my increase, touch my frustration, touch my weaknesses, touch my lupus, touch my cancer. Somebody say, touch me, Jesus. And so you're going to handle your weekdays. She went to the right place. Uh, she saw the right person. She got the right touch. But there's one more thing she did when he touched her. The Bible says, and immediately she was made straight. Don't y'all make me shout. I, I said some stuff is going to shift immediately. Uh, oh, come on. Somebody say, God, I need an immediate blessing. Uh, say, I need you right now. Uh, I need you now. I need you now. Somebody say, I need you right now. So she went to the right place saw the right person she got the right touch but fourth and finally she did the right thing i'm finished y'all he said he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and here's the right thing and she glorified <laughs> 18 years 216 months 936 weeks 6507 days 157,680 hours of weakness but oh but in one day Immediately, she was made straight. <laughs> and she glorified God. I, I came to speak over somebody's life immediately. Some things are getting ready to turn. I need somebody who got some spirit and some anointing to agree. So I, I'm expecting something to turn around immediately. Yeah, I said something is going to turn around immediately. I, I, I decree over your life that it won't always be like this. Because God is going to perfect everything uh, concerning you. Uh, and sooner or later, it's going to turn in your own favor. Somebody shout, it's turning around for me. Uh, yeah, it's turning around for me. Uh, this woman could praise God. Uh, she did the right thing after she got her healing. Uh, but I came to encourage you on this second Sunday in October. Don't wait until after you get deliverance to praise him. Uh, but right now, in the middle of the circumstances uh, lift up your head uh, lift up your hands uh, and give God praise uh, we praise thee oh God uh, for the son of that love uh, for Jesus uh, who died uh, and is now going above uh, hallelujah oh, and the glory Oh, God, I, I sense right now, I decree and declare over somebody's life that even when you're going through your W-E-A-K days, I want you, hallelujah, I want you, yes, Lord, I need you, hallelujah, to get to the right place, to see the right person, to get the right touch, but then do the right thing. And if you do that right now, by faith, I decree and declare that some things are going to turn around for you. God, I want you to bless every person dealing with lupus, every person going through a weak moment right now. Now allow your strength to 
we may manifest in your weakness because when we are weak God you are strong and we thank you for your strength in Jesus name amen amen and amen you be strong even in your weak days Listen, I don't know what you've been facing, but the word of God has gone forth to let you know that by faith today that you are more than a conqueror. I am persuaded that death, no life, angels, principalities, powers, no things present, no thing to come, no height, no debt, no any other creature, nor depth, nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. I want you to know that. I want you to believe that, that you are victorious we've been talking about this all day long I'm telling you you got the victory now through Jesus Christ I want you to believe and declare right now that you already have the total victory hallelujah and we praise you we glorify you Lord thank you Lord thank you for the victory those of you watching now listen let me tell you something uh, he is the king of glory he's the right of our story and he's a prayer hearing, he's a prayer answering God. He's the author of time, he's the sustainer of our minds. And our prayer is to hear that he will hear our prayer. Lord, we need you. We can't make it without you. You're in control of our lives. And those who are watching, if you need prayer right now, I want you to get your phone quickly. Quick. I want you to get that phone. I want you to type the word prayer. Come on, type the word prayer to the number 678 201 1351. If you need prayer, I want you to type that word prayer prayer is six seven eight our intercessors are waiting right now to pray with and pray for you if you need prayer go ahead and type that word in right now God's gonna answer your prayer secondly maybe you want to connect with this ministry whether you're in Atlanta or Alaska Decatur or Dubai Ghana or Georgia Stone Mountain or Sudan if you're in Lothonia or Las Vegas you can be connected with this ministry right now get your phone and I want you to text the word connect connect to the number 678-201-1351. Thirdly, maybe you want to be saved. These things are written, John says, that you might know that you have eternal life and that life is in his son. And he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son hath not life. So if you want prayer to connect or be saved, text those words to 678-201-1351. You can text right now. And then maybe perhaps you did not we're not present, you didn't give in the first offering, you logged on and you want to sow a seed. Or maybe you were blessed through the word of God today and you want to give. Listen, there are four ways you can give. You can give by text to give, 678-201-1351. H-O-H-A-T, H-O-H-A-O, H-O-H-A-G-F. You can give by text to give, you can give by cash app, you can give through the website, or you can give through the P.O. Box. P.O. Box 361499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. So go ahead and give right now. Listen, we're going to close this service. But listen to these words of the song I love so much. King of glory. King of glory. Writer of my story. Ask him to hear my prayer. Ask him to hear my prayer. We recorded this 10 years ago. Author of time. <laughs> He's a sustainer of my mind. Sustainer of my mind. Ask him to hear my prayer. Hear my Ask him to hear my prayer. Let's <laughs> say, I need you. I need Come on. Can't make it without you. Tell me, you're in control of my life. You're in control of my life. Hallelujah. Ten years later, I still mean. Come on, come on, tell him, tell him. Say, I
listen as we close this service i want you to do a favor whatever you stand in need of i want you to type the names of people that you want to intercede for right now if it's a school system if it's someone a relative who's sick just type their names in type the name of people you want us to pray for in your virtual communities uh, or maybe that's something that you want specifically to intercede for somebody else somebody who's dealing with cancer in this cancer awareness month I want you to type the name of the people, names of the people that you know are dealing with cancer right now. Type in the comments. And while you're doing that, we're going to, here's our refrain. We're going to ask God for every name. Ask God, hear my prayer. As you're typing. As you're typing, we're praying. Tell God whenever I need you. You're always right there. Come on. Come on, ask him, ask him, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. Please hear my prayer. Please hear my prayer. Whenever I need you. lift your hands and receive this benediction now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee and be gracious unto thee may the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee may the Lord make his face shine upon thee and for the rest of this week may he give you peace in Jesus name amen Amen and amen. I love you. Have a great week. I love you. It's going to be all right. Be encouraged. I love you. Have a great week. Have a great week. Be encouraged. I love you. Have a great week. Hallelujah. It's going to be all right.